Oh, there I am. Welcome again to the Hobo and his Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom, and my girlfriend is currently out on a on photography assignment, being the world-class photographer that she is. Um, we just witnessed Evolution last night. That means we talk about Monday Night Raw tonight. Let's talk some wrestling again. I want to thank everyone for liking, sharing, subscribing. And for all those that leave a comment, thank you very much. And also feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. I apologize, I'm just kind of finishing dinner off. Having some mellow pumpkins for dessert. Yummy I mean, Halloween candy. Only two days away from the havoc of Halloween. And I think the cards are going to change a little bit. I think there might be a couple of surprises coming on Wednesday. We shall see. But first off, very rare that I do this. I'd like to give a shout out. And to Fiercely Fearsome FX. This El Generico band moment goes out to you. Now that all my shout outs complete, I'm gonna get to some raw. And this was actually a really packed show. I was shocked. I seem to go at, its same, at the same pace, though. I think that's only because there were a lot of recaps from Evolution last night and a lot of previews for Crown Jewel. And I didn't realize Crown Jewel is gonna be Friday. Morning. So I'll probably review that Friday night ish. Do my Lucha Underground review. Maybe Thursday. And then do a little bonus on Crown Jewel picks. And we'll, and we'll see how things go from there. Again, this is about Raw. And it was fairly recap and promo heavy. They had some they had a they seem to have a lot of wrestling matches on though, too, for a change. Which is rare. Um a couple of them were really short. Wrestling matches themselves. Yeah, they 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 were okay. It was nothing I think only in the one match kinda. Not too great. Your him sandwich. Oh, yeah. The only one wasn't that great. But, hey, you can't hit a home run all the time. But you need to swing. But you can't hit a home run if you don't swing the bat. So, again, they always put some product out. And, of course, being the wrestling fan I am, I do like to enjoy it. So again, we start off raw with a kind of Roman Reigns recap. Again, we wish Roman Reigns the best. Just for that, put a little icon up of Roman Reigns to show my support for Roman Reigns in his fight against leukemia. That being said, the show starts off again. Start off with the Roman Reigns kind of whole recap. Showed him about uh, going backstage, and, and the wrestlers were really shocked. And again, according to the dirt sheets, um, Roman Reigns was kind of like alone on, on, on the bus before he made his announcement. So kind of one of those good things is like you want to keep people's emotions genuine and just just that. And he probably needed time just really to collect himself. And it doesn't seem like a scripted promo, which is good. I mean, everything seems to come from the heart. Again, Joseph Anoa'i. Do apologize if I butchered that last name. I'm sorry. I'm trying. Again, all of our thoughts and prayers go out to you and your fight with leukemia. Good luck. 
Good for but then again, um, so it starts off with Braun Str with a, a Lesnar comes out because Baron Corbin's out saying, oh, well, we're going to have it's a vacated belt. So instead of having a three-way, we're, we're going to have just a regular state of wrestling match. Braun Strowman versus Brock, Brock Lesnar. Of course, Brock Lesnar comes out with his advocate, Paul Heyman. Then Braun eventually comes out. There's a step down. Baron did the not-so-smart things and put his hands on Braun. Braun puts his hands on you, and you will get these hands. But Baron got those hands. Again, don't put your hands on Braun Strowman. Bad juju. So again, of course, Braun slammed him down. Brock seemed to be thoroughly enjoying it. Brock looks in amazing shape. He, he's, he looks like he's back down to fight weight. Good for him. One day I might get to fight weight. Gee, how many? I'm not that. I think I'm only about 50 pounds away. 50. I can never get beneath. Yeah, I can never get beneath 220. So I'm probably about 50 some odd pounds away from kind of my ideal. My ideal weight. I do have some muscle, and I don't want to lose too much muscle. Then Brock, and then Brock just seems to be enjoying himself and, and, says, and tells Braun, do it again. So Braun did it again. Unfortunately, Braun was celebrating too much. Got an F5 for his effort. So probably the math. Oh, wait. I do not want Dr. Keller here. He doesn't like Halloween that much. He's off in his office of academia. He's visiting the Hardy compound. The Hardy Halloween House Show. That's one thing I'd rather see than both Evolution and Crown Jewel. It's a Hardy Compound Halloween party. Then this gets us to our first match of the evening, evening, and that's Bobby Lashley versus Finn Balor. It's a rematch again, and I think the only thing about this rematch, and I'll tease it a little bit, there's no 50-50 booking for it. So that's good. Um, Leo Rush again talks and talks. Still wearing the one ear pierce, the, the ear piece. So he probably has fins in his ear. Oh, yes, because last time I was in Vince, Max, in Vince McMahon's head. So I picked six out of the seven matches. The only one I missed was an NXT match. If I would have gotten all seven, I would have been a fighter. So that means I read them Stephanie, Triple H, and Vincent A. McMahon himself. But this was a fun match. Again, you have the powerful wrestler versus the more agile wrestler. Um, it was fun. Uh, Finn's power moves just seem to annoy Bobby Lashley, which is the way it should be. And then it was DQ because Leo Rush just shoved Finn off the top rope when Finn was going to go for the coup de grace. So the interesting thing, that's Bobby Lashley's second loss. Which is good, because it's, at least it's not 50-50 booking. It's something different. Although Finn is making Bobby Lashley very very angry. You don't want me to be ang angry. Old Hulk reference. Again, then, then once you realize that he ooh, lost because of DQ, you just be, continue to beat on Finn. And this was actually a kind of fun match. This was their cheeseburger match. Then we get to a 10-woman tag match. And again, this is just like a two times the rematch. Because you had Trish, Lita, Natalia, Sasha Banks, and Bailey versus the Riot Squad, which is Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, Alicia Fox, and Mickey James. And it was it was okay. I mean, all the wrestlers kind of got their highlight. Again, it turned out just like the the, the opening match between Fox. 
James versus Lita. Stratus. It was like a face spot fest. I mean, it was okay. I mean, just, it was, for the most part, it was a really organized wrestling match for being a 10 woman match. If this was a, a 10, 10 men match, it'd be a whole schmoz. And, and if this was Lucha Underground, it'd just be chaos all over the place. And I don't think New Japan does a lot of men spots. They do a lot of tag team and six men. Well, they do do a lot of eight men, though. It's kind of the same way, but then they at least do organized spots. Like every in New Japan, they tend to do organized team spots. In WWE, they just seem to do individual spots. But again, you had the heart attack. Then it kind of broke down a little bit, and then Natalia eventually won with a sharpshooter on on poor Alicia Fox. For the win, and it was it was okay. I mean, it was a ham sandwich match. Mainly because they probably should have had the evolution thing as a blow off. Hey, a great send off to Trisha and to Trisha and Lita. Especially after the send-off Lita got. Oh, wow. By prime time. Going through her po box of personal items. Female personal items. And yeah, with Nia Jax promo being asked when she's going to take on Ronda Rousey. Then a little bit about the Dean heel turn. They have a really good fun Elias promo. Um, Elias runs down Baron Corbin. Doesn't he says he he came to Charlotte because he wanted a party with? Woo! I'm the high styling. Woo! Profile. Woo! Up all night. Woo! Rick Flair, baby. Wait a second. There's only one way to do it, baby. It's baby. So again, it was it was a fun promo. Um, Elias has a song for Baron, and then just runs Baron down. Baron doesn't want to hear any of it. Goes back in his office. Bye, Chispa. And then he gets attacked by Jinder Mahal. And this led to Elias versus Jinder Mahal. And, and this was actually a really fun match. I was shocked. The Sings were finally helpful. For the most part, they aided. Jinder Mahal in the match. The one Singh distracted the ref while the other Singh kind of bent Elias against the ring post in the one corner and Jinder was kind of directing everything. So it's good. It's, it's good that they're getting people involved. Again, it's a good strongman on strongman match. It was a fun match. Um, Elias went over. Um, he eventually did hit the drift away. And this is an example of what a impromptu cheeseburger match could be. You know, it was fun. It was good. I had a smile on my face. You make me smile, you're going to get at least a cheeseburger. Then you have Bobby Roode. The glorious, wait, glorious Bobby Roode and the glorious Chad Gable. Chad Gable wants to know where he gets those robes from. Chad, Chad Gable, you need to earn those robes. Versus the Ascension, versus the Authors of Pain in a triple threat tag team match. And the smart thing is that I'll just call them Glorious Gable, or Rude and Gable, and the Ascension actually jump AOP. Smart stuff. Get rid of the toughest guy, then you can figure out things in the ring. Um, it was a, it was a fun match. Um, for the most part, they got rid of AOP. AOP weren't really a factor in the match. So again, every time they would get in, they would just they would just get get double teamed. 
again, it makes sense if you're Bobby Roode, Gable, and the Ascension. Get rid of the strongest. Get rid of, get rid of your biggest threat first. And then you can figure out what happens. Um, Bobby Roode eventually does stack. And kind of, I forget, I think it's a roll up. Cool boy roll up on Victor, I think. Sometimes I get him confused. And then the authors of Pain come in. Just clean house. Gives a, a good old fashioned trip to the woodshed, beaten. And again, this was actually a fun match, all things considering. I'm going to bump this up. To a cheeseburger match. Then you have a Seth promo. Seth demands answers from Dean. Says, if you don't come down here, I'm going to go up there. So we'll see what happens next week. I hope they have this go on for a while. That would be good. Then there's an announcement that Bobby Lash is going to be there instead of John Cena. I know that the, there was a whole bunch of talk. John Cena says, I don't like what they're doing in Saudi Arabia. I'm not going. Um, I have mixed feelings about it. and I'll let, let everyone know what my feelings are. Um, oh, wait. Maybe Wednesday or Thursday, whenever we do our prediction, I shall tell my girlfriend to prepare something if she if she if she so chooses. I think I'm gonna make a little <laughs> video before add to our prediction. Again, Crown Jewel and Evolution were not two pay per views I was overly excited about. Evolution, you know, it was okay. It, it had its, it's had its high points. Um, I've heard mixed mixed reviews. Overall, it was good. It was fine to me. Um, I, I just think it just, the low points were, were low, the high point, the high point was high, and everything else was good. Um, I'm just not a big fan of, of, of legacy matches or, or just kind of throwing things in at the last minute. Again, that might be my own thing. Oh, let's see there on the screen. Got rid of that bug. Touch screen. Cool. Um, so again, Bobby Lashley's going to take the place of John Cena. A good for Bobby Lashley. He's like, I'm getting paid, baby. Show me the money. And hey, the Saudi government's throwing money like it's going out of style. I would take an extra dime from the Saudi government. Then the next match, um, I think at this point it got long, but then all of a sudden it was like the end of the show. So it was good. So that long point didn't happen until, I think, about the end of the second hour, where you have Ember Moon versus Nia Jax. Again, Nia Jax is more powerful. Ember Moon again, is more agile. I saw this style a little bit early in the night. So at this long point, it was a good match. It was a good, clean wrestling match. They really stuck to wrestling. Nia Jax can just kind of toss Ember Moon around, though. Um, then came out and kind of confused me, because I guess she's eventually going to challenge Nia Jax. I honestly forget if the two of them relate, are related. But for the most part, eh, it was an okay match. It was, it was a can of soup match. You could have done without it. Doesn't hurt to have it with it. It's okay. Think, again, feel free to leave a comment. Say yes, they are related. I know Tamina Snuka. And I don't know if he was trained. Or I forget if he's I forget if Jimmy Snuka was trained by or is related to the Noy family somehow. And again I do apologize. I'm not good when I see apostrophes and and German name assets and, and strange letters and multiple apostrophes and too many vowels always confuse me. So then we have actually probably a really fun match. You have the Lucha House Party and representing Lucha House Party, we have Kalisto 
who we shall see this Wednesday. And Lindsay Dorado versus the Revival. And this, I was shocked. This is an amazing match. Um, again, the styles are so different. The Revival is a much more classic tag team match. Whereas Lucha Harvest Party, again, they have that Lucha background, so they're the high flying. Again, if you know the Revival, no flips, just fists. Um, it was a really fun match. But because it was a fun match, if the Revival didn't lose, it would have been maybe a little bit better. But overall, this was another cheeseburger match. Yeah, it's nice to see Lucha House Party come up. Ren Renee Young got excited. Corey Graves just ran him down. Michael Cole's kind of the straight man. But it was fun, though. It added a little bit of pep and energy to that last segment, last hour of run. I'm like, whoa, that woke me up. Especially after the previous match. I'm like, oh, that little shot of energy. Oh, yeah, and before there was a Kurt Angle promo, um, I just wanted to mention that. It was, it, was, it was a good promo. Kind of highlighted his wrestling, his amateur wrestling career and into the pro wrestling. A lot better than last week when it just seemed he was reading off the Titan Tron because he was not too sure what to say or got his script five seconds before they said, okay, we are filming. Then we had a Dolphin Drew promo. Um, Dolph is actually getting better. Um, then this led to a Dolph versus Apollo Crews match. A really good showing for Crews. Dolph shows he's actually very deserving of being in the Crown Jewel Gold Cup thing. And again, it really highlighted both wrestlers. So when you highlight both wrestlers, and it's more than just a clash of styles because Dolph is an amazing seller. And Cruz, for his size, is an amazing athlete and can do, like, backflips. Like, standing backflips and standing moonsaults. It's amazing. Um, Dolph, of course, is a little bit smarter, more savvy ring veteran. Hey, it makes sense, though. Um, he did get the win after his super kit. But, again, this was a really fun cheeseburger match. Then there was a DX Brothers of Destruction promo. Um, Kane Under Undertaker came in the ring. Well, again, we might say. And they delivered a promo. You heard DX music hits. Kane leaves the ring. All of a sudden, Shawn Michaels shows up in the ring, super kicks the Undertaker. Undertaker just straight up after the super kick. Classic Undertaker fashion. End of show. Um, for the most part, it was pretty good. It had a fairly good flow, except for the end of the second hour, where it just seemed to kind of drag again. But that's a, I hate to say it, that's like a typical Raw show. So again, if you did not hear Fiercely Fearsome FX, I sent a video out in your honor. And I'll also subscribe to them. Also subscribe to Fiercely Fearsome FX. And again, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Everything you say, I do try to apply. If you do, again, just like Fiercely Fearsome FX, you get a little video in your honor. Uh, tomorrow night is going to be the SmackDown review and Mixed Match Challenge review. Wednesday is going to be a little Havoc-filled Halloween. Yeah, I can say that. Havoc-filled Halloween on WWE 2K17. <laughs> I know I'm kind of behind the time still, but that's okay. You'll get to see some some innovative wrestling matches. Um, Thursday will be the Crown Jewel pay pay per view predictions. Friday might be a double duty day where I do both Lucha Underground and Crown Jewel. Or worse comes to worse, I might 